Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 41 to 51. It's the Gospel for the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. St. John writes, At this, the Jews began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth, he who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. That's from John chapter 6, verse 41 to 51. We are reminded of the connection between the Eucharist and glory. What do I mean? Well, you know, I have at various times met people who think that at the end of life we die, and that is the finish of all personal existence. One elderly person I once spoke to told me that he believed that after he died, his fate would be no different from that of any dog or cat. He would be buried, and his existence would end there. Undoubtedly there are and have been plenty of people who think that there is no life beyond the grave. But the societies of the world and most people in our Judeo-Christian culture have been formed to some extent by the great world religions. Consequently, they accept at least notionally that there is a hereafter and some form of judgment and reckoning. They might accept this, but not a lot of people truly realise it. A great number live out their daily lives thinking of this life only. They rarely think of life hereafter and how one should be preparing for the judgment of God that precedes it. Their plans relate to this life, as do their efforts, their hopes and their regrets. In effect, they think that all there is is this world. They regret not having taken certain opportunities that would have brought money or more, advent or more advantageous work or greater social standing, reputation or fame. Very many would never think of regretting having done many things that have set them back in terms of an eternity with God. Our Lord in the Gospel I read earlier, from John chapter 6 verse 41 to 51, refers very explicitly to the eternity that is coming. No one can come to me unless he is drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise him up at the last day. He will raise us up on the last day, if we are drawn by the Father to come to him. He goes on to make an explicit connection between his gift of the Eucharist and our eternity in heaven. I am the bread of life. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Many people long for their retirement at the end of years of work, but they never think of longing for heaven. The famous Irish priest, Father Patrick Payton, once said that he was looking forward to death because that was the gate to heaven. God means us to long for heaven and he provides for us a constant pledge for it. That constant pledge, that promise and foretaste of what is to come, is what our Lord refers to in the Gospel, the Holy Eucharist. Heaven is where we shall see God face to face, 
and be in union with him forever. Our foretaste of this is Holy Communion. St. Paul tells us that in Christ we receive every heavenly blessing. In heaven we shall be granted every heavenly blessing because we shall be with Christ face to face, never to be separated from him. Here, when we receive Holy Communion, we receive the same Jesus who is now at the right hand of his Father in heaven. Therefore, when we receive Holy Communion in the Mass, we are receiving a foretaste of all the blessings of heaven. So one of the things that we ought to pray to Jesus about when we receive Holy Communion during Mass is heaven and our journey to heaven. We ought to pray for all that we need to get there. At the Last Supper, our Lord himself directed us to think of heaven in receiving the Holy Eucharist when he said, I tell you, I shall not drink again of the fruit, this fruit of the vine until that day when I think, when I drink it again with you in my Father's kingdom. So whenever Mass is celebrated and whenever we receive our Lord in Holy Communion at Mass, we ought to remember these words and think of the heavenly banquet with him that this points to and reminds us of. We ought to pray to our Lord about our homeland in heaven when we receive him in Holy Communion and pray that we and the others we care for will reach there. Our Lord's presence in the Eucharist is just as real as it is and will be in heaven. But in Holy Communion this real presence of Jesus is veiled under other appearances, the appearances of bread and wine. But it is the same Jesus who is present there to help us on our way. Not only does the time we have with our Lord in Holy Communion remind us of our personal eternity with him in heaven, it also would remind us of the new heavens and the new earth which eventually we shall see and be part of. The same Jesus who comes in Holy Communion during Mass will come again in glory at the end of time, and all of us will be gathered before him to be judged. No one will escape that day, just as no one will escape the personal judgment immediately following death. The same Jesus who comes to us in Holy Communion during Mass will be the judge of all and the centre and source of all heavenly blessings. Following this final coming of Christ and his judgment, there will be a new heaven and a new earth, and all will be new and glorious. This we know from divine revelation given to us in our Catholic Christian faith. All of this will happen by the almighty power of God, and we shall be part of this new heaven if we are judged worthy. If we are not judged worthy, all will be lost. We will therefore joyfully converse with our Lord about these final things and about our eternity with him when we receive him in Holy Communion. Holy Communion is a pledge, a promise and a foretaste of our eventual union with him, both following our personal death and also at the end of time, when all will be restored and death will be no more. The Holy Eucharist is our pledge of future glory.